We're now going to solve an example of a, a short circuit time constant, and we're going to do so with the following circuit. We're going to use what they call a resistive divider bias for a bipolar transistor, and we'll actually learn how to analyze this biasing circuit in a few moments. But for the time being, we're just going to focus on the capacitors. So when looking at this circuit, what we have is a common emitter amplifier. We're putting our input in on the base of the circuit, taking our output from the collector. So the emitter is the common terminal. We have a voltage source with a series resistance, R sub I, and we decouple the base from the source using a DC blocking capacitor with a value of 10 microfarads. It's a very large capacitor. We have resistors R1 and R2 at the base. We have a resistor RC and a resistor RE at the emitter. We're going to take the output off of a resistor R sub L and we're going to bypass the emitter resistance with a capacitor CE which it will say is equal to 1 microfarad. Again, very large. We'll uh, put a DC block between the collector and the output using a capacitor CC which will have a value also of one microfarad. Now the first step in analyzing the circuit is to make an equivalent circuit and remember what we're going to do is short circuit the voltage sources, short circuit all large capacitors except for the one being analyzed. We're going to replace the capacitor being analyzed with a voltage source. So we're going to start by analyzing CB. And our equivalent circuit for CB, anal or for the CB analysis, will look something like so. We can note that R1 and R2 are tied uh, to, the, uh, to a common point. And since uh, in small signal analysis, we short circuit the voltage sources, we would have R1 and R2 going between the base node and ground. So we can place R1 in parallel with R2. We're going to replace the capacitor with a voltage source, Vx. And we're going to measure the current, Ix, that flows through that voltage source. Because Ce is replaced with a short circuit, we short circuit the emitter to ground. And finally, RC, due to the short circuit, gets placed in parallel with RL. Don't forget that with our bipolar transistor, we have a resistance between the base and the emitter, R pi. So now when we find the current flowing through Vx, we can write that RCB is equal to Ri, which is in series with R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi. And of course, the time constant associated with that would now be tau CB is equal to CB times RCB. Next, we're going to do the analysis for the capacitor CC. The equivalent circuit looks like so. We're going to re replace CB with a short circuit, and that means that all uh, RI, R1, and R2 will be in parallel. Here we have RC, 
the collect the emitter is still shorted by the CE capacitor for this part of the analysis. We're going to replace CC with a voltage source, VX, and measure the current IX flowing through that voltage source. And of course, we can't forget RL here. Now, also don't forget that there's the output resistance of the transistor. So if we were to write an expression for RCC, it would equal R sub L plus RC in parallel with RO. And of course, the time constant, tau CC, would equal CC times RCC. The last step in the analysis is to look at the capacitor CE and we can make an equivalent circuit. At the base we have RI in parallel with R1 in parallel with R2. At the emitter we have our resistor RE and we're going to replace CE with a voltage source VX and measure the current IX that flows through that voltage source. And at the collector, we have RC in parallel with RL. Now we know that looking up into the source of or sorry, the emitter of a bipolar transistor, we see approximately 1 over GM. So we have 1 over GM in parallel with RE. So our RCE is equal to 1 over GM in parallel with RE. Now one thing we might note here is that 1 over GM is typically going to be very small because we want GM to be large. And so this would typically approximately just equal 1 over GM. The time constant, tau CE, is equal to CE times RCE. And we can now find our low frequency pole, omega L, is equal to 1 divided by tau CB plus 1 divided by tau CC plus 1 divided by tau CE. And of course that corresponds to the point and the magnitude of the amplitude response where the frequency response flattens out to start the mid-band gain. So to summarize, we'll use our inspection analysis to find the mid-band gain. We use OCTC, open circuit time constant, to find the high frequency response. And we use short circuit time constant, SCTC, to find the low frequency response. And we remember that small capacitors are going to dominate the OCTC response, or the high frequency response, and large capacitors are going to dominate the low frequency response. Next, we'll go back and look at uh, means to solve for the uh, bias network that we uh, showed for this example.